Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody else happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Give him a hand, praise. All right. Um, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have, have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to ensure in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me up on a rock. I have just read for you the 27th Psalm, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen. 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 Let us pray. God, our Father, here we are. Bowing down just to say thank you one more time. Lord God, we want to say thank you for waking us up this morning. God, we want to say thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you, Lord. You blessed us with our health and strength. You blessed us with the activities of our limbs. And we just want to say thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Father. Because you've been good to us. We realize that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And here we are this morning, Lord God. We want to say thank you for your many blessings, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, Master, we want to say thank you for waking us up. Thank you for our health and strength. Thank you for the activities of our thank limbs. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we don't take it for granted, Lord. You put food on our tables. You put shelter on our heads. You put clothing on our backs. You kept shoes on our feet. And here we are just wanting to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Master God, you took us through a week's journey. Ups, downs, Lord. You took us through the days of highways and byways. And we just wanted to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. For all that you have done for us, Master. But, Master God, you didn't stop there. You kept on blessing us over and over and over again. Over and, over. and here we are this morning just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But Lord God, despite of everything you've done, we still fall short, Master. And we just want to ask you to forgive us, Master. Forgive us for all of our sins, Jesus. Oh, Master God, we have said some things that we shouldn't have said. We went places that we shouldn't have went. We had thoughts in our minds that we shouldn't even carry. And we just want to say forgive us, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for just being good to us. Oh, you allowed us to see one more day, Master. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyhow, Master. And here we are just wanting to say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, the virus may be going around, Lord, but you continue to bless us with health and strength. And we just wanted to say thank you. We ask you to bless us this morning, Jesus. Bless, bless the congregation, Jesus. Bless the ones that listen to us through Facebook, Jesus. Have mercy on their souls, Lord God. Let them realize, Master God. Oh, Lord God, they have a God to glorify. And they have a praise to give, Jesus. We thank you. We ask you to bless Paradise, John. Bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Bless Pastor David and his family. Continue to give them strength, Lord. We ask you to bless your preached word today, Jesus. Oh, Lord, touch Pastor Wiggy, Jesus. Give him strength on high, Lord. Let him teach and preach your uncompromising gospel. That somebody may come ask them, what can they do to be saved? Oh, Master, we thank you. We lift you up, Master. We magnify your name, Jesus. And all praise is due to thee, God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, for it is a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We 
ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anybody serve a good God? Oh, come on, come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so on this morning. Anybody serve a good God, a God that's faithful and true, a God that's full of grace and mercy? The fact that we're here one more day is just a sign that God still has his hand on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. Whatever you do this morning, be bound giving God the best praise you can give him, the best hallelujah, the best thank you, Jesus, the best Lord, I love you. Come on, with your hands lifted up, come on, let's talk to our God on today. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for being a battle axe. We thank you for being a bridge over troubled water. Father God, thank you for keeping us one more day. Hallelujah. We are grateful to be in the land of the living one more time. Thank you for the blood running warm in our veins on today. Somebody wishing they could be in the house of the Lord today, yeah. but couldn't be. So we take full advantage of the opportunity that we have today. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name. We've come to praise you high on the earth, high above our problems, high above our circumstance, high above what we feel. I encourage you to stand on your feet and put your hands together, but this is praise and worship. Come on, don't even be paradise. Come on. Put your hands together.
for them, we just love them. Is there anyone that can agree with me this morning in the sanctuary that God is to be praised? Has he done anything to, to you, to your life, to your children, to your home, to your health, to your finances, in order for you to give him praise? And you know what? I'm so, I'm so full of him. I say, if you don't do anything else for me, you've really done enough. And for that, I love you. We love you on this morning. With our hands lifted, with our hearts open, we declare that you are the true and living God. And we love you more than anything. More than worldly possessions. More than, more than the home, the car. More than our relationships. More than our health and strength. We love you more than anything. We thank you for your wonderful sacrifice on this morning. We just want to say we love you more than anything. Out of the fruit of your lips, can you declare that you love him more than anything? Come on, come on, come on. If you have a personal relationship, it should be easy. Come on and lift it up and just say, I love you more than anything. I love you more than anything.
your appreciation. Lord, I love you.
of my favorite because it's really simple. It's in about four words. And in the carnal mind, you're thinking, okay, hallelujah, Lord, magnify your name, glorify your name. Okay. But in my spiritual life, I notice that if I continue making declarations over my life, over my situation, somehow God is working on my behalf. So as you worship with us, and as we uplift the name of Jesus, I dare you just to trust God and cast your cares on us. And he's going to be working on your behalf even now. He knows what you're going through. He knows your pain. He knows your hurt. I encourage you to cast it at the altar on this morning. Amen. Put your hands together if you love them.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was dead, but now is alive and alive forevermore. How we thank God for this gracious and glorious privilege that God in Christ has afforded us this day. To my son, Trey, and to his lovely wife, Latoya, I know you're watching, and I've been watching you on Facebook as you are enjoying your 20th year anniversary. As you are moving through the Crescent City of New Orleans, I thank God for this privilege to share with you this way. It was 20 years ago that they stood before me and exchanged their vows in matrimony. And he said, well, since we're going to be celebrating, I think that it would be appropriate for you to fill my space on this particular Sunday. And so join me in saying to them again, happy anniversary. And have a good time in the Lord in the city. I have with me today my wonderful wife, who is my traveling partner, my prayer buddy, and we'll stand up, baby, you can stand up, get up, get up, way, why not? You've known her before, and she's here with me again today. I have my brother-in-law, David, Stan David, and his friend, Charmaine Stan. They're worshiping with us today on this day from D.C., and, uh, going to be with us for a few days and we bless God for them. To the officers and members of the Paradise Church, I, I thank God for this privilege to stand again and uh, this church holds many memories for me. My friend and brother, Pastor Kelly, who uh, served him for so many years and I was privileged to preach his funeral in this place. And then to install my son, Pastor Wilfred Davis III, in this place. It holds many, many memories uh, for me. Many memories. This past year and a half, or maybe two, has been a very difficult time, not only in our nation, but a very difficult time ecumenical. The pandemic has ravished our society and has left us in some sense of disarray. For some it has just been an annoyance and for others it has been a devastation. We've seen the effects of the pandemic. We've seen emotional and mental distress We've seen social and physical stress because of the pandemic. Many of us have watched loved ones suffer alone because we were unable to be by their bedsides and hold their hands and rub their heads. Many of us have seen many of our loved ones who have transitioned to the other side. And some we were not able to properly memorialize because of the devastation of our, the pandemic. Our children have, in many instances, regressed because of their inability to be in the classroom and to enjoy society. We have seen many of our women who have lost gainful employment because they had to be at home and could no longer occupy the workspace. Some, and especially among the black population, have seen their small businesses disintegrate because of the fact that they were deficient in funds and unable to sustain themselves. And, and, and we've come through such a time of trial, a time of tribulation. And I wish I could stand here today and tell you that all of it is behind us. But in the words of the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King, there are some difficult days ahead. There are some storms that we still must face. Some tragedies that we must still overcome. There is unrest in the world. War is going on right now. In 
in the Holy Land. And there's war right here in our nation. People against people in a Congress that won't function. Hate and violence on every hand. And the question becomes, how do we traverse? How do we move forward? How do we stand and appropriate the times in which we must face? When I was in high school then, began to experience some things in my life. I talked to my mom and dad and thank God for spiritual parents. And I asked them how much I stand and how much I subsist. And they gave me some songs that they wanted me to read every day and I've done that. And I want to share one of them with you today to help us in this time great trial yeah. and to help us through what we will have to face. And it is found in Psalm 61 where the psalmist says, hear my cry yeah. oh God yeah. attend unto my prayer. Yeah. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, and thou hast been a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wing, Selah. And the word Selah gives the break before the scripture moves to another tone and another tender. I want to talk just a moment today from this passage, these four verses, and I want to encourage you, and I want you to believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is our rock. God is our rock. The words that have arrested us today on the words of David, the great king of Israel. And he pins them at a time that is very difficult in his own existence. The Lord has elevated him and he has become king of Israel. He's reigning in prominence and in power. But at this time of writing, he's suffering with an insurrection, a revolt that has come upon the throne. And even though he is king, he's king without a throne. Because he's made now because of his enemy to dwell in the caves, to dwell in the forest to dwell in the wilderness. His life has been assaulted and his throne has been revolted against. His enemies have risen up and they've come upon him to take his throne and his life. It's a critical time in the life of David. And it would be critical if it were enemies from without that were seeking to assault him. Because he understood the way of movement in that day and age because regimes came and regimes went. That was rise and fall in the kingdom. But this assault does not come from an enemy without. This assault comes at the hands of his son, Absalom. It's not some foreign power that is seeking to destroy him, but, but his own son that comes out of his own bowels as now consulted with 
the enemies. And they have sought, they have sought to take his life. His son. His son. His own son. Who cannot wait for the inheritance, but who wants pre death benefits? His son. His son. Who has enjoyed privilege beyond measure? His son. Who has received the best in cultural advancement and education? Who has lived out of richness and prominence? His son comes upon him to take his life. David is sitting in some foreign place, thinking about the condition of existence. And he says, hear my cry. Oh God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the comfort of that way. Forgive me for being redundant, but, but the scripture has a way of, of raising us up Thank you, Lord. and giving us inspiration Thank you, Lord. in our times of distress. And for those of you who like to take notes, let me just share with you this prayer has three utterances that David made. There is an utterance of desire. There is an utterance of declaration. And there is an utterance of determination. An utterance of desire, an utterance of declaration, and an utterance of determination. Might I open them up for you? And give me a few moments and, and I'll be through. We can go have some red beans and rice and fried chicken. Come on, meet me. Meet me. Green beans. David says, when my heart is overwhelmed, in this time of great distress, in this time when I am confronted with that which transcends my strength and my sagacity. In a time when I'm facing a crisis that I cannot handle on my own. Here is my desire. Lord, hear my cry and attend to my prayer. I'm at a strange place. I'm at a difficult juncture in my life. And at this place where I'm in great distress, here is what I want you to do for me, Lord. Hear my cry and attend unto my prayer. Hear, Lord, listen to my heart and then consider my situation. And then do fit what you deem necessary to deal with me in my deliverance. Hear, hear, Lord. Hear, Lord. From, from the ends of the earth. And when he speaks of that, 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 that has to do with the fact that he's in a place where he's never been before. From the ends of the earth, I'm no longer on the throne. And I'm no longer in the temple. I'm in a strange place now. Yeah. I've been driven from my places of comfortability. The place where I usually meet you. I'm pushed out now. I'm pressed in another direction. From the end of the earth is not so much a place as it is a condition of existence. Wherein we have to meet God in a way 
that we've not met him in the past. And so he said, from the end of the earth in my distress, and all of us has, all of us have some end of the earth experiences. Those places that make us uncomfortable. Those places that aggravate us. Those places that depress us. Those places that gives us severe troubles. Mm -hmm. The end of the earth can be cancer. The end of the earth can be a divorce. The end of the earth can be some child that has gone astray. It could be the loss of job income. The end of the earth is that place where we find ourselves, mm -hmm. where we're not at peace, mm -hmm. where our joy seems to be turned to mourning. Right now. The end of the earth. Yeah. But what David helps us to appreciate is that it does not matter where your end of the earth is, yeah. you can still call on God yeah. and he still hears you. Yeah. Right. Come and here's what I want you to do for me, Lord. I want you to lead me to the rock. To the rock. Earth, to the rock. That's higher than I. Now, now, don't miss this. He does not say, lead me to a rock. Yeah. But lead me to the rock. Yeah. Yeah. Definite rock. Yeah. Because there are some other places yeah. that might seem to be sustainable yeah. and substantive. Mm. But they are pseudo places. Mm. They give us joy and pleasure for a moment, but they can't give us lasting peace. And so David said, Lord, in my wandering, don't allow me to search on my own, but what I want you to do is lead me to the rock. And what David is really saying is, I want you to lead me to yourself. And when you lead me to yourself, then lift me up because I'm unable to do it myself Earth. and place me on you Earth. so that I'm higher than what I'm going yeah. <laughs> Put me on the rock. Yeah. And if I'm on the rock, yeah. I'm higher than my circumstances. Yeah. And if I'm higher than I'm, my circumstances, I stand in a safe place. Desire. Desire. And other utterance of the sound. Hear my cry. Mm -hmm. Lead me mm -hmm. to the rock. Thank you, Lord. But out of this utterance of desire, there comes an utterance of declaration. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For thou hast been a shelter. Yeah. <laughs> my shelter. And a strong tower uh -huh. from me. I've learned something as I walk with God, as you probably have also. There are times when God places us in dire situations so that He can bring us to a place of remembering. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes God has to shock us so that he can make us remember what he's already done and who he is. But sometimes our life sails along so smooth and things are so well with us that we habitually engage God. And God has to bring us down and take us through something so that we can remember had it not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be where I am. And so David said, it's almost like he comes to a new realization. He's begging God because of the situation. It's dire, it's depressing. But then all of a sudden it's like, come to yourself. What's wrong with 
with you. Why are you disquieted in your spirit? Can't you remember what God has already done? And so out of his desire comes this declaration. For thou hast been my shelter. And you've been my strong child. Now watch this. Shelter denotes provision. And the strong tower denotes protection. You have been my provision. And you have been my protection. And if you have already been, why would I not trust you to keep on being? If you have already been, why now in this moment would I not trust you to keep on being? If you have brought me, can I trust you to carry me? If you have lifted me, can I not trust you to take me higher? He said, I remember my life. And I remember thou has been. Now each of us ought to have at least one thou has been experience. Each of us ought to have at least one thou has been experienced. At least one. At least one. I, I think of so many in my life where God has been. And each of us ought to have that. Thou has been. But when I come to difficult places in my life, and, and I'm struggling as David struggles. I find my comfort in going to mine. Thou hast been spot. And for me, my thou has been spot is on the side of Highway 71. When I was a senior in college, and we were on our way back to school, a drunk driver hit us in the rain. Three of my friends in the car were killed in me. They had to cut me out of the car. The doctors told my mom and dad I wouldn't live. And if I lived, I'd be a vegetable. That was February 20th, 1967. Today is May 16th. Hyenas and the lions. Right. 
and the speed of the cheetahs, the strength of the of the of the elephants and the height of the giraffes. Angel. Every night and then on Wild Kingdom they will show the flight of the bird. Not often, they don't do birds much, but every night and then they, they, they highlight birds. And I was watching this particular Wild Kingdom. And this mother eagle had given birth to eaglets. And they were in the nest. And she was soaring and looking for food that she might feed them. And while she was soaring, other predators, hawks and the like, started coming toward the nest in order to destroy the eaglets. The mother perched from on high, looked down and saw the trouble of the eaglets. Yes, sir. And with speed untold, she flew down and sat on the nest. And when she sat on the nest, she spread her wings. And when she spread her wings, the enemies could not see the babies because they were under the covering of her wings. That's what David said. I will trust in the covering of your wings. And when trouble comes, I know that you are perched and you are looking down. And when the enemy comes, you will cover me. Yeah. So that they cannot attack. Yes, sir. And that's why I like that song, I trust in God. Wherever I may be. Out on the land. Or on the stormy sea. Though come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. And then in the refrain, he said, I trust in God. I know he cares for me. Upon the land or on the rolling sea. Though billows roll, he Keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over me. Yes, sir. And the people of God say, Change. 
I want to be made anew. God will do it right now. He's so loving. He's so kind. He will do it right now. So we wait for you in the congregation. We wait for you in your homes to say, God, for the Lord.